This video is about what is the foundation of the church. Hi, I'm Bake Odafi, and this is Bible Study Verse by Verse. If you'd open your Bible to John chapter 17, we'll begin in just a moment. John chapter 17, verse 6, Jesus revealed the Father to those who were given to him. If we look at that verse, John chapter 17, verse 6, I have manifested or made known your name, that's the name of the Father, to the men which you gave me out of the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. So God has given select men to the Lord Jesus, and here we're talking about his disciples. God chose these people uh, before the foundation of the world, as we're going to see, and they were chosen out of the world. So uh, the word world in the scripture has, has its meaning from the context. You can only tell what it means from the context. So in this case, I mean, it's going to switch back and forth as we go through uh, looking at, the, at this lesson in John. In this instance, it means of all the people of the world, the Father has chosen men out of all those people. In some instances, it means the physical world in this, this particular section of Scripture. So, out of the world, out of all the, all the people of the world, the Father has chosen men or people to give to the Lord Jesus. He's chosen them for His own, and He's given them to the Lord Jesus. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 says it like this. According... As he, and we're going to take out the pronouns in this verse. If you want to look at it in your Bible, you can follow along and understand uh, that the pronouns make it difficult to understand. When you put the nouns in there, it becomes easier. According as he, God, has chosen us, the people that are saved, in him, in Christ. So God chose the ones that he would save to be in Christ before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So God's choice of a people to give to his son, God's choice of a people for himself to give to his son to make them holy and without blame and to stand before God in that way. So people belong to the Father by his choice. It's his choice that occurred before he created it, everything or anything, before the foundation of the world, before he laid the foundation of the world, before he spoke the world into existence, the Father chose a people for himself. That's what we call election. That's choice. It's just like you have a, um, a national election or a local election. You're going to choose somebody to represent you, somebody to stand in the government for you. This is what God did. He elected, he chose people for himself. And these people were chosen not on the basis of anything that is within them, themselves. In fact, just the opposite is true. God selects people uh, based upon their demerit and their unworthiness. Listen to 1 Corinthians 1, 25-29. Because the foolishness of God, so this is his reason for the selection of people to save, the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Understand that. God's foolishness is, the foolishness of God, if you, if you could say he has foolishness, is wiser than the wisest man can be. And his weakness is stronger than the strongest man could be. For you see your calling, and the calling has to do with your salvation. Take a look around your church, Corinthians. Look at the people that are saved. See how God has saved people. Look at your calling. How, how that not many wise men after the flesh. So not many wise people get saved. And not many mighty. Not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world 
and the things which are despised has God chosen. Yes, and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. So here's God's criteria for the choice that we're talking about in John chapter 17, verse 6. Here's his criteria for that choice. Not mighty, not noble, foolish, base, despised, things that are not. And he does this so that the glory might resound to him and not to us. Because like uh, Ephesians chapter 2 says, uh, no flesh is going to glory in his sight. You know, we're saved by grace and not by works. Uh, otherwise, we'd, we'd glory in it. We'd boast. We'd crow about it. We'd um, stick our fingers uh, under our suspenders here and say how wonderful we are. And that's just not so. Because it's God's choice of men. And we see that in John chapter 17, verse 6. He chose men out of the world that belonged to him. And he didn't choose them based on anything uh, that, that he forced or saw in them or any goodness that he sees in them. Because if that were the case, then his choice would not be a choice that he makes and he gets the glory out of. It would be the glory would come to the men. So no flesh is going to glory in his presence. And these men are chosen out of the world. So uh, out of all the people, this word world here in chapter 17, verse 6, has to do with the people in the world. Out of the people in the world, God has chosen some of them for himself. And he's, he gives those people to the Lord Jesus. Jesus saves them. And the Holy Spirit comes along and grants them repentance and faith unto life by their faith in the Lord Jesus and their repentance of their sins. So God the Father chose a people, and in this case he chose these disciples, and he gave them to the Son. We see this choice in Luke chapter 6, verses 12 and 13. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray, and he continued all night in prayer to God. This is Jesus praying to his Father before he selects his, his apostles, his disciples, these twelve. And when it was day, he called them unto him his disciples, and of them he chose twelve, whom he also named apostles. So here is a glimpse that we have into the functioning of the Trinity. The Father and the Son put their heads together and come up with this list of 12 that are going to be the disciples upon which the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be, a, going to be founded. The Father selects these people and he gives them to the Son. And then he builds his church upon them. So Jesus didn't write anything down. He left that to these apostles and the prophets the Old Testament prophets and then his apostles in the New Testament and the prophets in the New Testament. Those are the people that founded the church and the church is based upon them. And we see this in Luke, I'm sorry, in Matthew chapter 16, verses 16 through 19. Simon, uh, Peter, called Simon Peter, he gives a profession of faith in the Lord Jesus after Jesus asked him the question, who do, who do men say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said to him, You're the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, or son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you. In other words, you didn't get this on your own. It didn't come to you because you're smart. It didn't come to you because you could figure it out. It came to you because God revealed it to you through His Holy Spirit. But my Father in heaven... So let me, let me back up a little bit. For flesh and blood did not reveal it unto you, but my Father, which is in heaven. And I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So... You would think, uh, and there are some religions that say, 
while these people were the actual foundation of the church, it's built upon them. And what the, what the actual truth is, the church is built upon their confession of faith in the Lord Jesus. P Peter just confesses that Jesus is the Christ. And uh, the word, uh, you're Peter, it means a rolling stone. It means someone's unstable. But upon his confession that Jesus is the Christ, that's going to be the thing that uh, the church is built upon, upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And he uses these 12, and one of them is a, is a devil, and, and, and goes to his place, and they select another one. And th those people are the things that God uses to build up his church. And he uses, it, it's not in their merit, it's in their testimony about what they were taught by the Lord Jesus. He even selects Saul and changes his name to Paul to be an apostle. And he spends three years in the wilderness getting taught in a seminary that has him as a student and Jesus as the teacher. And Jesus brings him up to speed on everything in the Old Testament, explains the gospel to him, and he comes out swinging and goes on his missionary journeys and writes two-thirds of the New Testament for us. So the foundation of the church is the profession of faith that these men have in the Lord Jesus. Their, their testimony about him. Jesus makes the Father known through these men. And the church is founded on that profession that they make. Ephesians 2.20 puts it like this. Uh, the, the church is built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Okay, well you think, well that, you know, they're so important. And they are, they're very important because of their relationship and association with Jesus. Because the Father gave, chose them, they belong to Him, He gave them to the Son, and the Son instilled in them all the teaching that they needed to have and all the, all the understanding that was necessary for them to go and then make that profession known about the church. They were built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So it's interesting the, God, the way that God works. When God saves somebody, he saves them because they look at the Lord Jesus, because they see him as worthy, as extraordinary. They see him as the sin bearer. They see him as the deliverer. They see him as the great physician that takes away their disease of sin. And what he uses to do that are people who come along and take the message of the, of the truth in the Bible and preach that to them. And the Holy Spirit gives them repentance from their sins, repentance toward God, and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's the same way when the establishment of the church. Jesus uh, infused everything that the Father wanted him to, that he taught the Lord Jesus. He infused all that into these people over that three and a half year period. And they then formed the church and, and formed the basis and the foundation of the church. And they gave us the scripture in writing, which we continue to be able to build a church off of. So what is the foundation of the church? It's this, it's these individuals chosen by God, given to the Lord Jesus, and then whom Jesus gives them the truth, and they believe it. At the end of verse 6, they've kept your word. That is the foundation on which the Lord Jesus builds his church. Thanks for watching. I hope the Lord saves you as you commit yourself in faith to the Lord Jesus Christ. I have hundreds of Bible teaching videos on my YouTube channel. You can click the red circle icon below and go there and look at the playlist and select the videos you'd like to watch. If you have questions or comments about this video, you can email me at biblestudyvbyv at gmail.com. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Bible study verse by verse.